We're on NFL.com and it's been a long day and started out kind of slow in bed when I hang over. But here I am at last. I'm on the East Coast, so things go a little bit different out here. Anyway, continuing last night trades. Um, there's still this prevailing feeling over at least online Raider Nation that the Raiders sucked this draft something fierce. They blew it. I mean, it's all over the place. Go on ESPN, although Paul Gutierrez, you know, he's been bad mouthing the Raiders forever. I mean, just. He's supposed to be a writer on ESPN, and he is, he's actually sunk below Bill Williamson. Bill Williamson just wasn't always there. Um, he wasn't too sophisticated and whatever. I mean, but Paul Gutierrez goes out of his way to remind everyone that he's a 49er fan. <laughs> He used to cover the 49ers, so, you know, you take him with a grain of salt. I mean, he does his, like, uh, his draft analysis and just the, the, um, the picks or whatever. Um, I mean, his, um, evaluation is just so bad that, um, he's all hum-hum about, you know, Colt and Miller. And, you know, it doesn't give him a very high rate and doesn't think of him too highly. Doesn't give a rating right here, but the Raiders have a problem on the offensive line. I'm sick and tired of hearing they have the greatest offensive line since the Dallas Cowboys. They had problems last year. And if, if they weren't evaluated uh, poorly... It was uh, because of circumstance, the way you're evaluating things. These stupid analytic people. I'm so sick of analytics. I'm with John Gruden. Analytics suck. What were the analytics in the Washington Redskins game? Would you come up with the analytics on the offensive line in that game? They give up four sacks, and they were ole sacks, you know? Just allowed Derek Carr to get pummeled in that game. And not too long after, he had a, um, some broken bones in his back. Yeah. Offensive line is a big problem. Donald Penn, there's no certainty he would come back or he would come back at the same level that he was before. And that is why they selected two offensive linemen in this draft. And Miller, Colton Miller. And Brandon Parker. They selected these guys for a reason. They definitely wanted to bring in some new blood that wouldn't have the same problems that the offensive line developed last year. I'm going to resist talking about that offensive line, the way it was characterized. Because I know people in the comments section is just like, you're a redneck racist. But I have to like point out the way it was like overemphasized how that that group was made up. They got a lot to prove. I don't see anyone on that offensive line that is uh, isn't expendable. You know, based on their their um what they did last year. They have a lot to prove. And so, this guy has no place, you know, criticizing Colton Miller. Neither do fans. This guy's a third round, fourth round talent. I'm telling you right now. No, he was actually a first round talent. The Patriots at 23 were going to pick this guy. Can you honestly say that the guy the Patriots got, I 
forget his name, Webb, I think his name is. Do you think he was better than Colton Miller? I mean, just on paper, you know, is he? The Patriots had this guy on the radar. The Raiders had McClinchy or whatever his name is on their radar. And they, the 49ers, they lost out on the linebacker they wanted. So they selected offensive tackle to stick it to the Raiders, just like, you know, Rod Woodson, who shouldn't even be allowed in the building anymore. Come on, if they're going to kick Rich Gannon out, they can kick him out. But Colton Miller was a top pick in this draft. Stop trying to, like, suggest that someone else, that he wasn't, that there was so many other lines. Yeah, I, I love how the people put this put this uh, across that he was, like, only, like, the... Uh, the sixth best lineman in the draft. The lineman in the draft or offensive tackle? Because if you're saying lineman, if you're saying offensive lineman, you you don't convert centers and normally not guards into offensive tackles. This is an elite position. This is a uh, this is a position that requires certain um, talent, footwork, and stuff like that. It's it's not the same as a god. So get over that already. You obviously spend too much time online on these draft guru, you know, mock draft bullshit things or whatever. Get off that page already. You're acting like they just selected, uh, you know, Jamarcus Russell and you could read into the future. Very few people could read into the future about Jamarcus Russell. I knew. I didn't know why. I just knew there was something wrong with him. But the, actually, the Raiders draft room, their war room, knew he was drinking purple drank regularly. They knew. They, they did a background check on him. It's unbelievable. They knew about this. They couldn't not. Uh, they could not force Al Davis to change his mind or whatever, but stop trying to stop trying to reevaluate, you know, the draft as if it is the most important thing in the world. Remember, because of Jamarcus Russell, because he was such a fuck up, there's now a rookie salary cap, and guess what? The top position means jack shit. These guys have to earn the right. And that includes Colton Miller and anyone below him. It includes anyone on the Cleveland Browns. You know, their top, top picks. It doesn't matter. They still have to prove themselves. That was the idea of the Jamarcus Russell rule, which is the, the rookie salary cap. <laughs> and so the other one they pick is... Um, because this guy went to Sam Houston State, which no one's ever heard of, and who has? I don't follow call. I don't follow college football, and I never heard of it. Maybe I heard of it. Maybe somewhere down the line, but not really. It's not in someone's lexicon. P.J. Hall. They're looking at this guy as a potential steal because of his um his measurables. He had what, like 80, um, 86.5 tackles for losses in his career. How many games do they play in the um, college football? Is it is 12 games a year? Um, 86? Is he a senior? I mean, he better be a senior. But even that, it's 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 over one tackle of a loss per game over four years. I mean, that's pretty impressive. But he played for a small college. How long played for a small college? He's always got huge thighs. <laughs> Reggie McKenzie must have been thought, 
looking at him and thought he was looking in the mirror. <laughs> if you remember Reggie McKenzie, he had huge thighs. Okay. The guy I'm thinking of, if I get the guy's name wrong, correct me. Because it's, you know, it's a while. It's been a while. Raiders used to have this guy. I think his name was Jerry Ball. That's the guy I, I'm comparing this guy to. This guy was always in the backfield. He's blocking, blocking extra points and doing all those things. He just always penetrated. That's what they just got right here. I'm telling you, this is what this guy is being asked to do. Being asked to penetrate. And many people are coming out and saying these, you know, these so-called experts. Uh, they're saying that, you know, the per the people who are, who are constantly um, performing in the interior line of, are shorter guys. Using leverage. This guy's very strong. I'm telling you, this is a good pick. He has to still prove it. If he fails, whatever, that's on him. This should be a good pick. Um, I, I would not, like, um, really hate this pick. It's an Al Davis type pick. Picking some guy out of the blue that no one else has on the radar at that time. Maybe he is like he was scheduled to be a fourth round pick or something, but it doesn't matter. Stop like caring about the where they're picked. Just stop that already. Jamarcus Russell is no longer in the NFL and the rule is in place. It's a rookie salary cap nowadays. Forget about it. The third round, they go back to tackle again, like I said, Brandon Parker. And the Raiders had problems on the right side. They had Penn going down. He's he's got a he's gonna miss games probably with the injury he has. He might think he's like motivated, but he may never come back. It's a real possibility. And guess what? You can't at the last second go find a tackle just like this. In uh, on the Raiders roster right now, Giacomini, he was the worst ranked tackle in all of football last year. <laughs> He's great at run blocking, but forget about pass blocking. Um, who are they just going to pencil in? Vidal Alexander. It doesn't it doesn't work that way, and you need more bodies in camp. Stop over evaluating the draft. The Raiders have been striking out left and right. They have a new draft person in there in, uh, in John Gruden. And let's see how well he does. If he does, if these plays don't live up to these expectations, okay, then we rag on him. Third round again. Because of trades, they uh, they select uh, Arden K. Now, I wanted Bradley Chubb. I've made... I've made no... Uh, suggesting that I wanted... Otherwise, I want them to trade up from. But they may have just got someone as good as Bradley Chubb. He's got these off the field issues. He had problems with injuries last year and weight problems. Now he comes in. He's in a better position. It's up to him. It's up to him if he's going to be like the 49ers Alden Smith. Or is he going to come in there and he's going to turn the Raiders into something else? This guy can really rush the passer. He is um, uh, Bradley Chubb. He's uh, Joey Bosa in this draft. It's a new sort of type of defensive end. I noticed it first with Joey Bosa. Maybe I didn't notice with other people. 
they're not the hugest guys in the world. They're not those huge guys the Raiders used to draft, like Anthony Smith. They're very stealth. And they're very good at getting around the edge. Very fast. That's what this guy is. When he is um, not overweight, not injured, because the injuries were related, I believe, to his um, weight gain, and he believes as well. When he's in that sort of condition, this guy is nasty. And in the AFC West, and I've said this before with Mahomes, that guy can fire it. I remember him and David Carr going at it, throwing the ball, being radared. He can fire it. But he's got the worst arm uh, motion in the world. He's got this long-winded windmill, windmill motion. It's crap. Dirk Kai has a compact motion. He's just effortless. You get this guy going against him, you're going to get some fumbles. You have Khalil Mack jumping on those fumbles if he doesn't get there first. This is a very good pick. But it's all up to Arden K. You know? It doesn't matter. They could they could have selected anyone right here. Anyone in the history of the league. They still have to go in there and compete. Get that through your thick skull. Start, get off those stupid draft girl mock, dra mock draft sites. And stop thinking that whoever they thought were the best players ever are the ones. I don't care who they are. You want to go through all the drafts? Look at all the retards that just failed? They were drafted in the top 10? The left and right. I mean, they're dime a dozen. Just get over it already. I don't know why I'm taking this so um, maturely. I've, I've definitely had problems with the drafts before. And even in this draft, you know, I like Vita Vea. I like, uh, like Bradley Chubb. Um, I like that um, Australian, uh, Australian punter. Um, I was even looking at um, some other players, tight ends. They didn't draft a tight end. I was most disappointed, but I've got over it. <laughs> you know. Now, this is one I would question, and this is why I question. I don't know who put his highlight reel together, but his highlight reel, all they did was show, I didn't see any flags come out, but apparently in college football, you can mug a wide receiver. He was uh, all over him like Lester Hayes. Now, that could be a good and a bad thing because occasionally the rep isn't going to call the penalty and you might get an interception. This guy looked like uh, he didn't tackle too well. And he looked like he had to mug the wide receiver the whole time. He was very anxious. Uh, that could be good and a bad thing, like I said. But um, I don't know who put the highlight reel. I, I saw him do that punt return or whatever it was and yeah that's all fine and good but covering those are like um pass interference not even holding calls all day long in the nfl and he's also injured so this is just some sort of uh experiment um i wouldn't think too much about this he might not even make the roster okay i half joked about reggie mckenzie heaven is um is triage pick and here it is <laughs> and i am i am very happy that it came now with <laughs> the fifth round maurice hurst is not happy about where he was picked right now because he thought he's much better but the raiders had inside track i can't remember the exact inside track but it has re related to the um some of the current raider staff and they had inside track. And I got a good evaluation of his um, medical condition. 
and other teams were deprived of this and apparently that is the case because this guy was going to be in the first round maybe early second round he was evaluated very high on many people's boards not that that matters it's it's purely speculative He's saying, oh, the Raiders are getting the greatest player in the draft or something like that. He can say all that all he wants. He's got to go in there. He's got to compete. And I just like how it's looking. But the PGA guy and Maurice Hurst and Bandidos being ahead of schedule. Those guys all together in a rotational cast, you know, that could be quite a show. Could be quite a show up the middle. Um, some of these guys are notorious for uh, tackles behind the line of scrimmage and just not losing the fight at the line of scrimmage. And the possibilities, what this opens up, people just gashed the Raiders last year, and there was always, there wasn't enough pressure. Paul Gunther, based on what I'm hearing and everyone else has heard, is he doesn't like to draw, doesn't like to um, blitz a lot. He just likes to fake blitz, and occasionally blitz. But disguise his um, his sort of a defensive setup, and you know, bringing in some guys that can get into the backfield like this is going to be crucial. Navarro Bowman, if you're listening out there, I'm telling you, you can call me up right now, and I will convince you you need to be on this team and be a star. Gonna be a star, you know. And Reggie McKenzie, you got you got to bring back Navarro Bowman. He obviously has a certain amount of money he wants. He's very crucial, very crucial. They need Raiders need a veteran middle linebacker to make this all complete. Raiders brought in some other guys in, you know, in, in the secondary. And, and I still have Kyle Joseph, who is one of the best things he does is, you know, rush the passer, really, blitzing. They have, they have this ability to get after the passer and to create these problems. And, but you need... A leader on defense. And I just want to see Navarro Bowman playing with Mari Hurst, PJ, and uh, Vandados and, and, and others. And to, I just want to see that happen. Don't you want to see that Navarro Bowman happen? Or are you going to go re-sign with the 49ers? I'm telling you, this could be something really good. Let's not forget the Raiders' number one pick last year and number two pick, how they played. The Raiders this year got two number one picks, two number two picks. It's like three or four number three picks. With uh, with Bryant, wide receiver. You know, Cleo Mack is going to come in with a new contract. Um, I'm sure everyone's going to be jealous of that, but just start think of the bigger picture. Think about um your age. Think about what you're going to tell your children or your grandchildren. What you did during this time. You have a really unique opportunity to be part of something. 
I'm sure something can be worked out. Um, Raider fans, I've not met too many who say, F, F Navarro Bowman, we, we should uh, bring, uh, we should draft a 19-year-old <laughs> green daughter. No one's saying that. I've not heard that at all. I mean, I know a lot of people wanted to draft someone like Edmonds. But those are projects. Those are projects. The Raiders want to win now. That's why they brought Giles. That's why they brought Gruden in. John Gruden. I was going to say Chucky. I was saying Charles. Uh, they want to win now. Raider fans want to win now. We haven't won in a long time. And... To actually bring that about is going to be an incredible accomplishment. Raiders want to beat the Patriots. We need to bow Bowman. Let's go back down in this draft. Okay, they get Punta, Johnny Townsend. <laughs> and... All uh, Gutierrez, the 49er fan right here, can say is he's worried about his uh, homesickness. Sickness? Well, I mean, really. Can we... I said it before, <laughs> Williams, can we get another person to write for the Raiders? I know the uh, ESPN is really doing bad right now, but... <laughs> Can we get someone a little more positive? <laughs> they brought another wide receiver in. He's just to compete. He's not a tall wide receiver. He's brought in as a body. Camp body, basically. And they also brought in... I don't know if it says it here. They traded with... Um, With uh, the Dallas Cowboys traded uh, Jihad Wood. Now remember how much flack I got years ago when I when he was drafted. I was like, "What the hell is this?" I couldn't get off for hopping on his name, and people just continued to hop about the. No, it means it means strength. It means strength. I was like, I could care less what the fuck it means. You know what it really means to me? They just drafted a project that didn't work. That number two pick was just traded to the Dallas Cowboys for um, a punt returner, kick returner, specialist, slash slot wide receiver. I think his name is Switzer or something like that. I'm not seeing it right here. Maybe on this page it'll say something. Well, it's not going to say on this page, but it'll say it on this page. Right there. Raiders trade Jihad, not Jihad. <laughs> I love how that was, you know, always like emphasized. It's like in the Young Frankenstein movie, um, Mr. Frankenstein, no, it's Frankenstein, <laughs> Ryan Switzer, this guy is a really, really exciting uh, player, and I think the Raiders got the better of the deal, they just made up for that second round pick, because this guy is, uh, I'm wondering, I don't know off the top of my head, I'm, nef I'm definitely not going to know off the top of my head, but, you know, how well he is on kick coverage. This guy's very fast, and, you know, they rate his, uh, John Gruden wants to emphasize the special teams. He can definitely punt return, he can kick return, and I, I, I wonder about his coverage skills. I bet they're superlative. The Raiders do need that. They, you know, remember they just got rid. I know they brought someone in that I've forgotten his name already. Uh, but you know they got rid of um, 
Cordell Pat- Patterson or whatever, and he went to the Patriots, and he was excellent at that. And the year before was, uh, what's his name? Guy that went to the Bills. I can't remember his name anymore. It's wonderful. Early Alzheimer's. But he was great on um, on uh, punt coverage, um, especially no, especially kick coverage, you know, but punt coverage as well. Um, no, it's very important. It, it's it is definitely very important that you do those things well. This is an offensive league, and I'm sure people are looking at the punter they pay. He's not as good as is King. King King can ride a ride a donkey like like he's at a bachelor party. Yeah, yeah. You don't build your team around a punter. They picked him when they were like the, one of the worst teams in the league. You don't build your team around a punter. Because you don't worry about that crap too often. Work down in the seventies, you know, when you need Ray Guy, whatever, and you play in you play in the uh Pittsburgh steel curtain and stuff and the orange crush. Guess what? This is an offensive league right now. You need to put your money and you put your emphasis in offense. You de- definitely need defense, I mean, but your offense is gonna be your uh your weapon and I think Raider fans they need to get off those websites that telling you how awful they did or who was the best players out there because that's really not it's not really true I mean nothing has been decided yet hold your decidement for later Raiders got some players in this draft that Pretty intriguing. You should be very excited. And I am like a pessimist when the draft comes along. I've I've had problems with many drafts. And yeah, I'm just taking this with a grain of salt. I suggest you do as well for your own health. Instead of like hating on all this. It's not like they drafted Jamarcus Russell. Even though there's very few rate of fans who hated that. Very few. Trust me, I was all over the internet, and you loved it. Those who were alive or old enough to type, loved it. Raiders got some pretty interesting players right here. You know, I don't know who would be my favorite. Because there's just different aspects to all this. You know, the Raiders' right tackle, for example, if we just pencil in Penn and say he's going to be okay, you know, the right tackle is a problem. It was a problem last year, and I welcome Colton Miller and Brandon Parker to compete for that position. And as far as, like, pass rush, they can't get after the quarterback. And, you know, everyone wants them to select all these players in the first round. But you can't. You see, the problem was this. When you have an offensive tackle problem, you cannot address it too much later. You need an elite player. That's why they selected Colton Miller. And uh, Brandon Park is, is the backup plan. Plan B. But as far as like getting after the pass rush, and you know, just all this talk about like the secondary sucks so bad. I don't know about that. I think it's because the defensive line sucks so bad. So that's why you bring in PJ Hall, Maurice Hurst, Arden K. That's why you bring these guys in. Those are some nice looking picks right there. I mean, I, I am looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. That is really what's exciting me right there. To get the ball back in Derek Carr's hands. And the way the Raiders offense. <laughs> they bring in Matavis Bryant. 
and they're bringing these, a lot of these these slot wide receivers. And they have very different package positions available. You know, uh, I do I do think that you know running back could be a problem at times because we don't know anything about um I forget his name already. The guy from Tampa Bay. We we don't know where he's going to be at. We know Marshawn Lynch is going to be improved. He says he's in better condition this time of the year than he was last year. Um, you know, after him, if they if they have a problem, you know, I I just don't think they're done yet with that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they traded for a running back. I'm not kidding. Um. A backup running back. You know, getting rid of uh, the running backs. Uh, I just, I'm surprised they're still on the board, still on the team, some of them. They definitely need to improve. And, you know, if Marshawn Lynch went down, you know, who are you going to rely on? That's a really big question mark right there. Martin, it was his name, Martin or something. You know. The pocket hamster or something. The pocket hamster. The muscle hamster. Whatever it is. You know, I, that's another player in the draft I was looking at. You know, I, I wanted them to get the guy. They pronounced his name, but I was calling him Juice. I thought it was better calling him Juice. It just sounded better. Like OJ. OJ. The Juice. But... You know, uh, Washington and Rashad, I don't know, maybe they were abused last year. Maybe they were misused. I think they were to a certain degree. It, w it was a different fail from the year before. And I, I, I don't know where Hood's at. I really don't know. Got a new offensive uh, coordinator, an offensive lineman coming in. Offensive lineman, coordinator, whatever you want to call him. Offensive lineman, coach. Who's also a, used to be a head coach. Um, so, a lot remains to be seen. But I would not hold your head so low. Until the whole process works out. That's my advice to you. Before you blow a gasket.